Happy Friday everyone and welcome to yet another episode of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security professional Corey Nockreiner and this is the episode for the week starting January 20th, 2014. Let's start with the story of Trojaned Chrome extensions. During the week, we learned how conniving advertisers can actually infect legitimate Chrome extensions with spyware or adware. It started when a Chrome developer talked about how he created two extensions, Tweet This Page and Add to Feedly. He then sold those pretty simple extensions to an unknown party. Now, the problem here is that Chrome actually has a lot of auto-updating capability, and normally this is great for security. However, it also auto-updates extensions. This means the third party that bought these extensions from the original developer could add additional code to them, and all the Chrome users that were using these extensions would automatically get this new code. So it's a fantastic way to insert malicious code into legitimate Chrome extensions. And as it turned out, that's exactly what these advertisers were doing. They were causing these extensions to create a lot of advertising pop-ups. Now, the good news is Chrome has since removed these uh, bad extensions, but this is a problem that probably will continue, and it's kind of interesting how it's leveraging a good security feature in order to add Trojan code to otherwise legitimate extensions. My advice to you is simply be careful what extensions you install. And by the way, I'll post a link to a great How to Geek article that talks about the known bad extensions out there right now. While we're on the subject of Chrome, a researcher disclosed another alleged vulnerability that can turn Chrome's speech recognition capabilities into a spying bug. A researcher named Tal Atir released some details about a particular bug he found. As you might know, Chrome has some cool new speech recognition capabilities. If you click, for instance, on the microphone in Google, you can actually speak your search rather than saying it. And this capability is also allowing web developers to harness Google and Chrome's speech recognition. However, this particular researcher or coder who is actually leveraging the speech recognition capability in his own JavaScript uh, applications, found that there's a sneaky technique he can use to create a under pop-up window. So this is a pop-up window that would appear under your window. Now, every time you visit a site that requires speech recognition, Chrome will ask you whether or not you want to allow the site to use your microphone. But assuming that you say yes because it appears to be a legitimate site, what you may not know is the pop-up under window is also accessing your microphone. And even when you leave the first site you visited, you're not actually turning your microphone off. So you may not be aware that it's still recording your every move. Now, there seems to be some sort of conflict between Google Google and this particular researcher whether or not this is really a vulnerability. According to Google, you have to give permission whenever you visit a site, so there really is no security risk here. On the other hand, according to the researcher, it's too easy for sites to trick you into thinking the microphone has been turned off. Whatever the case may be, it is kind of an interesting little trick, and we'll see how this turns out in the future. I will say that Google's usually pretty good about security, so if it turns out this is more dangerous than we first suspect, I'm sure they'll fix it. During the week, a team of researchers from an Israeli-based university told the world that they had discovered a vulnerability that can allow them to bypass VPN on Android devices. Now, they haven't released any full technical details yet, only a video demonstrating the attack. But what it looks like is if you can get a malicious application to run on an Android device, you can actually redirect a VPN connection's communications to another server and then do a man-in-the-middle attack that allows you to get all the VPN communications in clear 
your text. And on the phone, it will look like your VPN is totally connected and totally secure. Now, though they haven't released any technical details yet, these are the same researchers that found a vulnerability in the Knox secure container that you can find on Samsung slash Android devices. And this secure container was supposed to actually separate uh, certain data business data, for instance, from other user data to allow you to create kind of a more secure environment. In the end, it turned out that this was a significant vulnerability in Android, which they did then fix. So chances are this is a legitimate problem. That said, we don't know all the details yet. We do know that this application does not need root access. So if someone can get you to install a Trojan application from uh, the Google Play Store, he may be able to bypass your VPN connection. In any case, we'll keep an eye on this and if Android releases a fix, we'll be sure to let you know. One other quick note is although this malicious app can also redirect SSL communications, it actually still retains its encryption. So this means for the time period, if you're an Android user, you probably want to use SSL VPN as opposed to the other types. While we're on the subject of Android security, during the week I also saw an interesting post from a Chinese security company claiming to have found the first ever Android boot kit. Essentially, they found a piece of malware that had altered the Android boot process in a way to make it very hard for you to remove this particular malware. Even if AV products could find it and could get rid of some of its packages, it had adjusted the boot process so that it could reinstall itself. I'll be sure to post a link to the article that details this particular Trojan in a lot of technical detail, so be sure to visit the blog to see more about that. So let me end this week with just another interesting story about a nation-state attack campaign. During the week, a company called CrowdStrike, who actually does a lot of security intelligence, released one of their first ever global security reports. In it, they described a new APT attack campaign called the Energetic Bear. According to them, the Energetic Bear is a nation-state-sponsored APT campaign that's targeting energy companies in the US, Europe, and in Japan. The report doesn't go into a ton of technical detail about this campaign other than talking a bit about the remote access Trojans or rats that these attackers are using and talking about why they believe not only these attackers are Russia-based but that they are associated directly with the Russian government. It also notes that these rats are trying to steal data, whether they be credentials or, or intellectual property files, from uh, energy companies, some government uh, uh, agencies, and defense contractors. Another interesting takeaway from this particular report is the fact that many advanced attackers are really starting to move towards watering hole attacks. Now, I've talked about watering hole attacks before. This is a class of attack where a bad guy finds web applications vulnerabilities in a very popular website that his particular uh, group of victims tends to visit. The attacker can then use that web application vulnerability to kind of infect and hijack this popular watering hole website so that all its visitors might get redirected to a drive-by download site that it can install specialized malware. According to CrowdStrike's report, watering hole attacks are all the rage among advanced attackers. So what's your takeaway for this particular information? Well, it's that we need to make sure to create secure web applications. If you have any sort of web property or website at your company, you need to make sure your developers are practicing secure coding techniques. And if they don't know what those are, I recommend you check out OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, for a whole bunch of tips on how you can create secure web code. Well, that's all I have time to cover for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting and somewhat educational. As always, there were a ton of other security stories this week. In fact, Snowden had a couple of interviews and online Twitter chats where he answers a bunch of questions. So be sure to check out our WatchGuard Security Center blog, where I'll post a whole bunch of other links uh, pointing to stories that came out this week. As always, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. And you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.